Hello and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today's video will be a part three to two other videos that we've done entitled Imagination of Heart, uh, looking at images, okay? Images, where the Heavenly Father uh, decreed and declared unto the children of Israel in the Old Testament that they began to worship the imagination of their heart. It's images that they were worshiping, and they began to worship false gods. So we're going to look at some of the, one of the false gods that they look, they worshiped in the Old Testament. Is the Queen of, uh, they called her the Queen of Heaven. And uh, there is a video with that particular revelation on it also. That's in the book of Jeremiah. It's chapter 44. And I'm going to go over to that just to get us started with this revelation. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 44. We're currently in Bible study in the book of Jeremiah. And I just did chapter 44. And this is why this re re revelation came out of me to go ahead and go forward with it. Because it, it uh, correlates with this. Because they, the children of Israel... Uh, they began to worship idols, okay? They began to worship the queen of heaven, and they began to be comfortable with it and were uh, had no problem with it. And let's go into what they said in reference to it. Uh, chapter 44 in the book of Jeremiah says, As for the word that thou hast spoken, because Jeremiah told them uh, what God had told you know, told them, told him to speak to them. And so then they said, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven. And we know that burning of incense is um, symbolic to worship. So she, they were worshiping the queen of heaven to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done, he says. And we are, we and our fathers, our kings, our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then, and he just, the Lord had just destroyed Jerusalem for that same behavior. For then had we plenty of everything, they said, because they worshiped the queen of heaven and were well and saw no evil because they worshiped the queen of heaven. They said they deity, not because they worshiped God, they said, but because they worshiped the queen of heaven, they were in all these privileges, they said. Uh, and then verse 18 says, but since we left off to burn incense, since they stopped, they said, they had stopped burning, stopped worshiping the queen of heaven. We've won it all. We've been, you know, and have been consumed by the sword and by famine, he says. Now that happened because of the fact that they were worshiping the queen of heaven and the Lord allowed it to happen to them because they were in rebellion again, worshiping another God. But just wanted to t take a look at this and see in the Old Testament how they did the same thing. They worshiped deities from heaven. And God was unpleased with that also. And then as we go forward in the New Testament, when Paul began to go forward evangelizing in Asia, and over in Ephesus, in Ephesus a city called Ephesus, he began to evangelize. And he did convert some individuals there in that city. Uh, but nevertheless, they began to have doubt, okay? Somehow, some way. Uh, there have come upon them uh, people with uh, different uh, types of doctrine trying to seduce them and to believe in what they believed and that they what they were believing was not the truth. So God, uh, so then Paul then goes forward to, uh, he sends them an encouraging letter. And that's what the book of Ephesians is. It's a letter he sent to them just to edify them and uh, help them. And to remind them of the fact that they've been born again. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But now let's go over to the book of Acts chapter 16. Because prior to a lot of people being converted in Ephesus. It was a city that worshipped uh, another deity. So let's go over into that. In the book of Acts chapter 16. And this whole chapter... But I'm going to start with, uh, let's see here. I'm going to start with verse 16. Uh, it says, It came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination uh, met us, which, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. 
And the same followed Paul and us in Christ, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. So the lady did that many days, but Paul got grieved with it, turned and said to her, I command you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And so that spirit came out of her right then and there. Okay, then it says, And when her master saw that, okay, that the spirit had came out of her, the hope of their gain was gone. Okay, and they were mad. Okay. And they caught Paul and Silas and threw them into the uh, prison, okay? Brought them before the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, they, they have troubled the city, teaching some other type of doctrine. So now I want to go over to chapter 19, because we're going to see this same individual that they're speaking of and what type of uh, worshiping she was doing. So chapter 19 in the book of Acts, same book. It's the same individual. <clears throat> and then we start with uh, verse 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, he was a silversmith. He made silver shrines for Diana, uh, brought no small gain into the craftsmen, who he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth, okay? So moreover, you see and hear that none alone at Ephesus, okay, see that this is going on in Ephesus, but all, almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands, because they're worshiping this uh, shrine, for the silver shrines for Diana, so that not only this craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana, okay, because that's the god that they worship in Ephesus, which is the same particular woman we just read about in chapter 16 that was going around, uh, well, as they stated, she brought much gain to her masters with this particular worship. So they worship the great goddess Diana, going back over to uh, verse 27, she, okay, so and then verse 27 is so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that in the temple of the great goddess Diana, she should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worships. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Okay, so, and I just wanted to bring that out because she was a part of Ephesians, the same place, and I'm not going to read every verse. I'm going to skip around a verse here. She was a part of the Ephesians, uh, what they did worship prior to meeting Jesus Christ and being converted into the kingdom of God. They worshiped this goddess, Diana, and they made they had shrines and all types of things that they would do in reference to Diana. And now I'm going to skip over here to, uh, let's see. Verse 35, when the two it says, when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, you men of Ephesus, what man is there that knows not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? So again, we can see even in the New Testament, there was some seal, some worshiping of deities because this is a goddess, deity that the someone that is a part of the kingdom of heaven nevertheless but not to be worshiped as a god okay now this was an Im this was an image they said and of an image that which fell down from jupiter is what they're calling it i should say seeing then that these things cannot be spoke spoken against you ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly for you have brought here these men which are neither robbers of churches nor blasphemers of your goddess okay but nevertheless i'm thinking i'm going to stop right there with that we see that the ephesians over in ephesus the city of ephesus that is the particular goddess they worship diana okay until they were converted and after they were converted then paul began to admonish them and edify them and sent them the letter that we see in the new testament called the book of ephesians and let's see Let's go over to that right now.
Ephesians. And you, we can start with chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints. Okay, so it's, you see this is a letter to the saints, those that have been converted. Because we just read about how over in Ephesus, the Ephesians, in the beginning, they began to, they were worshiping uh, the goddess Diana. But since the uh, spreading of the gospel went forward by the disciples, Paul among those first in that area in Asia, they were able to help convert people into believing in Christ Jesus and coming into the kingdom and being born again. So we see that this is the letter he sent to them. And he says, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you, peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, then he goes on to admonish them and how they were predest having predestined us, okay, into the adoption of children. Verse 11, whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined. And let's see here. He begins to remind them of who they have began, to, who they began to trust in and to not lose faith in whom they first believed. Okay, because whatever kind of doctrine began to go forward with them, or maybe they began to think more on where they used to worship that di uh, goddess Diana. Nevertheless, he sent them a, a confirming, edifying letter to encourage them in their faith. Now, Revelations chapter 2, we can also see at one point in time that there was problems with the church in Ephesus the Ephesians church. And that's in Revelation chapter 2. And it begins in verse 1 where it says, Unto the angel of the church at Ephesus, because all of the churches that are written in the book of Revelation are the churches that Paul originally was able to evangelize to the people and they were converted into the kingdom. And then they began to go forward and build churches and congregations and things of that nature. And it tells us that here in chapter 1 verse 11, where it says, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first of the last. What thou seest, what you see, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna. So all of these churches are listed. And they're all, again, individuals that Paul was able to evangelize to. And they were converted into the kingdom of heaven. So it says here, unto the angel of the church in Ephesus. This is what I have to say. These things see says the Lord, he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them to be liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake you have labored and has not fainted. But nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. Now, that was the problem that God had with the church in Ephesus. He said, remember, therefore, from where thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I'll come to you quickly and will remove thy candlestick and out of this out of this place, except you repent. And this is also verifying the fact that now he's talking to the church that has been converted into Christ Jesus the new covenant, new testimony, they've been converted. Uh, and God is saying here, uh, I will come quickly if you don't repent and remove my candlestick. I will remove the Holy Ghost, okay? So that is letting us know that you can go so far with God, okay? Unfortunately, and that is telling it right there for us to see. And he's in verse 6, he says, but this thou has, this, this is what thou has, that thou ha hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate, God says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And to him that overcomes will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So what did he have to say to the church of Ephesus, the Ephesians? <clears throat> Number Verse 4 says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you had left your first love. Okay, so at some point in time, this was what, the Lord had John to write down the reference to the Ephesians because they had been converted and they had began to leave their first love, which was Jesus Christ. Once they had been birthed into the kingdom, they may have begun to go back into trying to worship the Diana goddess or another type of goddess. But nevertheless, that was the message that was for them. 
and the revelation, imagination of heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. Images part three. This is the conclusion of it. Let me see. Do I have another scripture? I don't have another scripture. <clears throat> this is the conclusion of it. But we can also see from it that even though an individual may at one point in time have worshipped another deity from heaven, they can still come under the covenant of the Jesus Christ, and the anointing and the Holy Ghost. They can still be converted into the kingdom because the whole city of the Ephesus was converted because of the evangelism and because of the truth being spoken through Paul and him preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and entering into that city and then afterwards sending them a letter to encourage them and edify them even more in the knowledge and in the uh, spirit of God. All right. So that concludes our revelation for images, uh, image, image, imagination of the heart, part three. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you as we continue to go forward. I'll see you on our next video. And uh, until then, I do have a prayer. I would like to petition heaven right now in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, Heavenly Father, any and all that may come on and see this video and that may be convicted within the Holy, Sk the Holy Spirit, within their conscience, in reference to serving and worshiping deities, O Heavenly Father. We ask for your mercy and your grace upon them, dear Heavenly Father, for falling away un, uh, dis deceitfully because the enemy is he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He will try to steal your salvation also, Heavenly Father. But we ask that you keep us close to you, keep us near, and, and somehow reach out to us and help us to know if we're serving and worshiping another deity and don't need to be. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus. All right, God bless you. God be with you. I'll see you on our next Bible study video channel.